recently New Brunswick has kind of taken the concept of a vaccine passport up a notch. Share with us how. They have now allowed uh, businesses and, and almost encouraged businesses to discriminate against the unvaccinated to an extent we hadn't seen before. Previously, vaccine passports were always, uh, we're only going to put those on, you know, uh, optional events and, and gatherings. But now New Brunswick saying that's actually going to affect uh, even grocery stores and essential services. And we're going to openly permit that kind of discrimination against individuals. And, you know, I, I was speaking on the phone with a client uh, from a First Nations community. Uh, many of the members, the elders in that community are not vaccinated. And them hearing this, that governments are now permitting even essential groceries to be uh, off limits to the unvaccinated in, in certain jurisdictions uh, was utterly shocking and horrifying. And I think as Canadians, to, to not uh, stand up against this kind of discrimination, again, not justified by the science, um, but just motivated by misinformed fear and an irrationality. Uh, it, 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 the time to stand is now, and uh, certainly that is an issue that needs to be addressed. My goodness. I mean, we've seen some of this happening in, in Europe. Obviously, Australia is always making headlines, but I, I, I recall Slovenia. You couldn't go to a local gas station if you're unvaccinated. You weren't allowed to pump gas. You had to go far, far away from your home for these few select gas stations that would allow the unvaccinated to get gas. Obviously, Austria. Austria is now really ratcheting up its its mandates. Uh, let's talk about vaccine mandates for workplaces, because this really hits home. I, it, the grocery stores does as well, and especially New Brunswick, because most of the grocery stores in New Brunswick, which is my birth province, by the way, uh, God bless New Brunswick, um, most of the grocery stores are owned by, by two major chains. So if either of these chains say, you know, we're imposing this mandate, that means they're gonna be, like a huge percentage of the population unable to access essential food. That to me is shocking. Let's pivot to talk about vax mandates for workplaces. I've heard personally from so many Canadians, you know, they reach out to me, um, even some friends who've lost their job because they could not violate their conscience or they had been given medical direction. Don't, don't get the jab yet. Hold off, wait and see, maybe later, but don't get it right now. And then they lost their job. Some of these folks have, have children. They're not just singles. They have a family to support. You know, we've had a show on this before where labor lawyers have said, well, it is the private company's right to be able to impose what they can. Are there core challenges for vaccine passports in workplaces? Well, there's a number of them in regard to private employers dealing, going through the, the, the process of uh, labor law and also uh, just employment uh, negotiations, settlements, those kinds of things. And I've talked to labor lawyers about that. In regard to government employers, of course, they don't have. Uh, the, the, the carte blanche to impose restrictions on their employees, um, and they have to comply with the charter. And so, for example, medical workers uh, in BC, in Alberta, uh, in other provinces are facing that kind of restriction. The Justice Center is close to filing challenges in both British Columbia and Alberta. As you know, in Alberta, uh, there's been a, a delay in the imposition of this mandate. It was supposed to come in back in uh, early October, then late and then November, and, and now it's pushed back out to December 13th, um, just because of the effect it would have on others. And so those legal challenges will be filed. Uh, I understand that Ontario decided not to do it at a provincial level, but many hospitals have, in fact, gone that way. Uh, Quebec And, and to be clear off. about Ontario, it's one thing to say, oh, we're not going to bring in our own policy, but nobody's standing up to the businesses that are bringing on these policies just because you said, oh, we won't do it, we're going to wash our hands. I mean, you can have your Pontius Pilate moment, but the effect is the same. Businesses are still right. doing it. Right, and hospitals are still doing it there too. Yes. And so, you know, in regard to those legal challenges, none of them have been adjudicated yet. Uh, in, in Ontario, we, we brought a challenge to the vaccine passport more generally, which would, again, not apply as much to the employees, but more to the general public that are accessing services and those kinds of things. Um, but yeah, the legal requirements around this uh, will ask, is this a justified workplace requirement? Uh, the fact that vaccinated people can transmit as as well as uh, unvaccinated people. The fact that unvaccinated people who have pre-existing immunity uh, from a previous COVID infection are actually much less likely to even get a COVID infection, maybe 13 or 27 times 
some wow. data suggests, un more unlikely to get COVID uh, a second time than a double vaccinated person. This is not accounted for in a single one of these policies that we've seen. And so okay. they are subject to legal challenges. Okay.